Oh, man. So I'd hop on my bike, I'd head down to Eminem Video, and the first thing I would do, before I even went to the video game section, is I would look at the horror movies. They were the same fucking horror movies every time, but I had to look at the back of the box. Because one back, and I'm not talking about horror movies, I'm not talking about like Friday the 13th. I'm talking about these were like borderline snuff films. I don't even know where this guy got them. I don't even know where you'd find them today. I'm still looking at the garage sales for a box of these movies. Video violence. I remember that was one of them. You look at the back of the box. It was a guy ripping somebody's leg off. And they had like a leg in their hand. And, the, and like all the tissue was coming out of the end of the leg. Let's get something straight here. These were movies. They weren't, it wasn't real. They were movies. But they were these horror movies. And Basket Case. Remember Basket, Basket Case? I remember my aunt basically chained me to the couch and made me watch Basket Case with this creepy little fuck inside of a basket mutated thing. What was that thing? Oh my god. I still have nightmares. But I don't know why, why I was attracted and fascinated, because I didn't like violence. I still don't like violence today. People at work, they show me these videos all day long. This guy, he's constantly putting his phone in front of my face so I can see, like, people jumping off of buildings. And, and coincidentally, when somebody jumps off a building, man, okay, when they hit the ground, it sounds like a gunshot. I always turn my head before they hit the ground. He shows me these videos, like the guy jumps, and you're thinking to yourself, oh my god, why are you doing that? It's, it's no, no. And then you see the guy fall, and, and then I just turn my head at the last minute, and then you, it, it sounds like, like a cracking gunshot when a person hits the floor. Who would pick jumping off a building as a form of suicide? What? Oh, the feeling of your stomach going up into your throat. You know how you, know how you go on a ride or something like that? Oh, my God. And, like, what are you thinking? Like, So I turned my head to, you know, to save myself from seeing what I, what I, what I was going to see. But to be honest with you, all of a sudden, theater of the mind kicks in. And you just, you have these unbelievable visions going through your head about what this, this disaster on the ground must look like. I, better off watching it. And oh, here's the latest motorcycle accident where a guy flies off the motorcycle, hits the guardrail, and then his head rolls three blocks down. And it's like the cameraman's running alongside the head. I don't know who's filming this stuff. And I'm sorry, it's the worst when a black guy films it. Because you're watching something so graphic to begin with, and then you hear, then you hear like, oh, snap, or something like that. I'm sorry, it's the truth. Oh, look at him, he's leaking. Come on. Can we have a little more respect when we're filming somebody's death? So anyway, I, I go into the video store there, first stop, it was always first stop, the horror films, just looking at the back of the boxes. And then it was, you know, the occasional creep coming out from behind the curtain in the porno section. <laughs> you know what was so embarrassing about the porno section? It was in that room behind the curtain. That little, you know, closeted room that didn't even have a ceiling. You had to carry the pornos out to the front desk. And I always tell the story about the guy that, the guy that worked at Sam Ash. That he was like the long-haired rocker or whatnot of him coming out of the porno section with a stack of pornos. 
and we're talking like 10 pornos, guys. I was like, wow, this guy's going to have some Saturday night. How do you even muster the courage to do that? I don't know. It was just like, you know what his, his spiel was. It was like 10 pornos and a six pack on the way home. This guy probably had one of those, like, a toilet paper roll mount on the side of his couch. So anyway. You had nothing to do. Do you understand me? <laughs> when, you, when you're, you know, 14, 15 years old, you had nothing to do. And it's, forget about it, if it's summertime, it's like time to burn. Oh my God, you remember these days where you had just like endless amounts of time? God Almighty. And then it was off to the video game section. And what, and to my amazement one day, you go over there, you look at the, you know, Nintendo games on the shelf there. Uh. And I look over and there's a half empty shelf. Half, it, was a, it was an empty shelf with four Sega Set Genesis games on it. I didn't know what Sega Genesis was. Listen, guys, we got we got video game magazines. We got Nintendo Power. Okay, we didn't know the Sega Genesis was launching. Nobody told nobody told you. You didn't. You saw it on TV. You, you but that early on, I discovered the Sega Genesis by walking into the video rental store, and there they were, four games on the shelf. Nintendo Power wasn't going to tell you about the Sega uh, Genesis release. That's how we found out. And I'm like, what is this? And I remember picking up the games. Games like... games. The first game I picked up was Last Battle. And I saw the graphics on the back. And I was like... I... Listen, I would sit there and stare at the games. It was Tommy Lasorda Baseball. Altered Beast... Last Resort and Space Harrier. Okay, number one, two doors down, Drago Pizza. They had the Altered Beast arcade machine. So it was like, oh my god, I can play Altered Beast at home now? And let's face it, the Sega Genesis had a decent ver version of Altered Beast. So I would sit there and I would stare at the boxes, stare at them, stare at them. I don't know, for 10 minutes? And let's face it, if, you're, if, you're, if you own a video game store and there's some kid staring at a box for 10 minutes, it seems like an, an eternity. You're like, what is this weirdo doing? So it wasn't too long, because it had to be an early release until I saw... Then, that, then it was that, that was it. I was almost at the video store every day. A new Sega Genesis games coming out. New Sega Genesis. And the idea of getting a Sega Genesis might as well have been like, ah. Uh, as far out as, as riding my bike to Jupiter. It just wasn't going to happen. I don't know. Who got game systems on launch? Who? Not in my town. It was like, okay, I'll, I'll get that about five years from now. So it was like, it was torture. You would see these games and it was like, now how am I supposed to do, well, how am I supposed to rent these Nintendo games with this sitting on the shelf? So it wasn't too long before I would go back and forth to the video store, and then finally, I remember pulling a game off the shelf called Sword of Sudan. This was an electronic arts game, and I remember looking at the back cover, and it said, Revenge is best written in blood. And it was like the blood dripping down the back cover. And the graphics were absolutely amazing. They were amazing. It was like, you were like a swordsman. I don't know. Medieval times. 
You could see there was like castle in the background. It was like, oh my god. Listen, this is what I always wanted. And then there was like a decapitated body laying on the ground. And I'm like, this is what it's all about, man. Listen, we were so sheltered by uh, Nintendo. You didn't get any violent games on Nintendo. I was sick and tired of Super Mario Brothers. I, I was so graphics, like, my whole thing was graphics. I was all about good graphics. And seeing this Sega Genesis and seeing, like, I wanted, I wanted good graphics, I wanted violence in video games, and I wanted, uh, I wanted it to be realistic. I didn't want to be in Mushroom Land! Okay? I wanted to be, all, uh, you know, a knight in a castle with a sword gutting people. You understand? Because I can't do that out in the streets here. Anyhow, so I remember the day, oh my god, when, when I got my Sega Genesis, and you, you want to know to this day, when I finally got my Sega Genesis, I think the, one of the first things I did is I went down and I used Phil's rental code, 621 by the way, M&M Video, and I rented Soda Sudan, and I got news for you. I'm going to tell you right now, this is a horrendous game. The controls are horrendous. The, uh, the sound effects are grating on the ears. The gameplay, horrible. But what it did have, it had amazing graphics. And it had something that I that he never experienced experienced before. The guy would be walking either through the forest or through the castle and whatnot, and there was no music. You heard like birds chirping. You know, this game, they designed this game to try to be realistic, guys. And then you go around with your sword, stabbing people to death with the sword, number one. It started out, you were fighting like these, I don't know, pikers? And they had like spears, and you'd stab them. And they'd fall down to the floor in a bloody mess. But what, what cemented this game for me was the third level when you went into the castle. And you got through another group of these pikers. And you came across these giants. And they were like giant, like, I don't know, knights. They were all, they had armor and all this. And you would go out to them and you'd basically hack them in the knees or hack, or, or stab them in the, in the knee area, and they would drop down to their knees. And when they dropped down, you would hack their head off. And I'm telling you something right now, when I first hacked one of the, um, the first time I, I cut one of their heads off, I was like, ah, bah, bah, bah. I, all I wanted is for my aunt to come over. <laughs> it was like, I don't know what it is. What is it? My, my aunt was so concerned about me because, number one, she bought, for my birthday, I got uh, Number of the Beast on cassette. I remember my sister got Prince, some cockamamie Prince cassette. And when we got in the car, she said, who wants to play that cassette tape first on the way home? And I was like, I couldn't, I couldn't get my tape uh, cassette open fast enough. We popped it in, uh, and the first song, what was the first song? I it might have been Children of the Damned. Or it might have been Invaders. And about three seconds later, the, the tape came out of the, the, the cassette deck of the car. And then, like, my aunt, I remember, had, like, a sit-down in the kitchen with my mom. I don't think he should be listening to this type of music. I was like, this is great. 
Anyhow, and then playing sort of a million on the Sega Genesis, I remember my aunt came over and she was like, it was either sort of a million or Legendary Axe 2. And my aunt had another sit down with my Oh no, she came in and she said, my goodness, she goes, this music is so macabre. <laughs> So I think she was r real concerned about my uh, well-being. Listen, there's nothing creepier than a kid who might be Looney Tunes. All right, I'm gonna give. A, listen, I, I'm gonna give all you like five to seven year olds. Any five to seven year olds watch the show out there? I'm gonna give you a little advice. You don't like your stepfather. He's giving you a hard time. You go up to him while he's eating dinner, and you whisper in his ear. I'm gonna stab you in your sleep. <laughs> About a week later, you'll see this guy, he'll look like he had two Samsonite suitcases underneath his eyes from not sleeping. There's nothing scarier than some maniac kid because you don't know what's going on in that little mind and there's no consequences for anything you do as a child. What are we talking about? I don't know where this is going. Anyhow. Yeah, so does the Dan Man. I hacked off the, like, that guy's head, and then all of a sudden you heard thunder and lightning in the background, but it was like Sega Genesis thunder and lightning. storm that the next board you were fighting these zombies and ultimately listen spoiler alert all right if you've ever want to play this horrendous game spoiler alert uh you find a wizard at the end who looks like one of the transformations that he makes is like he looks like an enormous ball bag. <laughs> like this monster connected to a big ball bag sliding at you. Oh my god. Graphically this game was like nothing else. the first 8 meg games. If it wasn't 8, because it was an early release, I know that. It might have been a 6 meg game. How about that? And it was beautiful to look at. Beautiful. The graphics were absolutely beautiful. For the time, you have no idea. And you used to get potions. You know, you drink the potion, you get stamina. You get uh, strength. You get defense. But I do, I do the classic thing that I always do when I play video games. I, I have a sickness. I don't use any potions. I don't use any super bombs. Because it's like I'm squirreling them away. Like that's the cheap German in me. I, I, I'll, I'll play shooters where I have three bombs and I never use the bombs. Because I'm saving them for some, I don't know what I'm saving them for, but next thing you know I'm dead. And it's like, oh, I should have used those three bombs. And you think I'd learn? No. And it's like you get the potions, and it's like you, I, I'm like squandering them. No, not squandering them. I'm like, uh, I'm like hoarding them uh, for a very special time that never comes. And it, it's taken me till now to realize that developers, you know, they put those potions there so you could use them at that particular time in the game so you can get through certain parts. So sometimes I've been playing games, I'd be like, this game's so fucking hard. It's like, no, asshole, use the fucking potions. It's like I paid money for them or something like that. So there you go. How could such a terrible game have such a wonderful effect on me nostalgically. I love Soda Sedan. I love it. 
It's got to be one of the worst games ever made. I absolutely adore that game. And I don't care. Anyway, guys, that's it. This is the countdown to Halloween. And we're talking about the bloodiest and the most gory games you could ever imagine in your entire goddamn life. I'm Bithead 1000. Sip of coffee for Sword of Sedan, by the way. I'm Bithead 1000. You just tuned into the greatest video game program in the history of human civilization. And you better believe that. With a 4K face! See you next time.